Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Thought for the Day for Monday, the 17th of August. Today's reading comes from Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse 11. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and ask that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent then and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything, as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. For Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. Anyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from their people. Indeed, beginning with Samuel, all the prophets who have spoken have foretold these days. And you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, through your offspring, all peoples on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. Well, that's quite a reading. Um, it, it takes place uh, just after Peter and John have gone up to the temple and uh, uh, there is a lame man, a beggar, begging at the gate called Beautiful. And uh, as he's asking for them for money, uh, Peter looks at this beggar and, and he stares very intently at him and he says, I don't have silver or gold but this I have, in Jesus' name, walk, be healed. And the man is miraculously cured, his ankles and legs are strengthened and healed, and he suddenly walks around, he's praising God and jumping up and down. There's a great big commotion. And so, of course, uh, as everyone recognises this beggar, they would have walked past uh, 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 each day as, uh, as, as they went to the temple. Of course, there's this great big crowd and Peter is addressing this crowd and he's explaining to them uh, of what they've done. They being, of course, the Jews in asking Barabbas to be released and Jesus to be crucified in his place. He very, uh, uh, very um, clearly shows them the error of his ways. And um, the couple of thoughts that I've got about this are really... Um, the, the first one is just this, this thing about when we don't put Jesus on the throne of our lives, we always replace him with someone else. There's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's never, it's never um, what am I trying to say? It's thought for the day, what am I trying to say? <laughs> I think I'm trying to say it, it, it's really very black and white. There's always someone who's ruling in our life, or something that is ruling in our life 
and there's always something or someone that is being put to death. And of course, for the Jews, they were putting Christ to death. They weren't letting him rule, take his rightful place as God's anointed one amongst them. And it's like that with us. And it's like that with all sorts of different areas of our lives. So it just reminds me, who, who am I raising to my throne right now? And who is it that I'm putting to death? Is it Christ? So that was my first sort of uh, stray thought, uh, which I've found difficult to put into words this morning. Uh, my second thought is just um, at how early on uh, uh, Jesus is declared to be the Son of God, not merely just a prophet. Peter calls him, of course, says, um, he quotes God in saying that, that, that Jesus was a prophet, amongst other things, but supremely, he was the anointed one, the Messiah. And at this point, you could all be saying, well, yes, okay, so Jesus was a, a holy man. But then comes this phrase that, that knocks all of this out of the park. He says, you killed the author of life. And there is, of course, only one author of life, and that is God. Jesus was more than just a man. He was more than just a prophet. He was more than just you know, a good teacher, a holy one. He was the author of life. And of course, this is repeated in the last of the Gospels to be written, John's Gospel, when John says, through him all things were created. And it's uh, uh, just a reminder of how early on uh, the disciples realized that Jesus was more than just a wise man or a holy one or he was God. He was the author of life himself, put to death on the cross. I wonder who's going to be on the throne of your life and your actions and your thoughts today. Uh, I hope that with me you'll be praying, Christ, rule over it all, rule over this day. And also a reminder that actually Jesus was God. And that's why his name carries the authority it does. That's why there is power in his name. And if only we would have faith to realize that there is power in his name, we too might see some of the miraculous things that happened all those years ago, even in our own age. I hope you have a great day. See you again next time. Bye-bye.